Hi, I'm Susan Moody with the Quantum Center of Excellence, and we have Fernando Crespo O'Neill. He's the accessory guy here, so we're going to talk about accessories. What is the accessory that every practitioner should own? Is there even such an accessory? Yes. Uh, you know, some people have been practitioners for so many years, and, and they've never bought an accessory, or they're new, and they're like, what's the one I should get? My favorite accessory is the silver lining face veil. Mm-hmm. And tell me about this little piece of accessory. Uh, what's really neat about it is it's so professional looking. So when you're working on somebody, it's a, a really nice uh, color on, on the one side. It's the purple. And then on the other side, it's the silver lining uh, material. Mm -hmm. uh, what's special about it is with the silver lining, it does two things. It's very conductive for the frequencies, but it's also naturally disinfecting. Okay, so this is the part that goes to the skin. It is. So they would put it like this. Correct. Okay, and how do they keep it on their face? That's a good question. Uh, if you're working on a client laying down, like say on a massage table on a recliner that lays back, uh, it'll just stay there. Uh, some people have tucked it up a little bit underneath the head harness to hold it in place, but if, uh, if your clients tend to be sitting up, then it's going to fall off. It needs to be held on some in one way or the other. So there's two items that you could go with. These are just the two I'm showing you. Uh, one would be like a face mask, like women or guys use for uh, falling okay. asleep. And so I'm sitting up and it's going to fall off. Yep. Obviously, because so actually put gravity it, works. <laughs> go ahead and put it down right about your, your eyebrow level. Okay. And then we'll put this over. Uh-huh. And we'll slip that right there. How's that feel? You know what? It's surprisingly comfortable. It's very lightweight. I can breathe through it really easy. And you know what else I noticed? When, before you put the uh, mask on, I could really see through it. I mean, I, it's that light. That's amazing. For people that are really claustrophobic, I wouldn't use a mask like this because they're going to want to see. So that way the head harness is going to hold it. Okay. Right. Or you could use something like this that's see-through. And this is just a simple, inexpensive mask that's easy to clean, and it will also squish that uh, whole face veil right onto the face. Okay. And why would somebody want to use the mask versus, uh, well, the eye mask versus the face mask? Is there advantages from one over the other? Well, first of all, with the, the beauty mask, it's clear. So if somebody is claustrophobic or, sure. or don't like being put in the dark, that would be a great option uh, to do that. Plus, since it, it conforms to the face, mm -hmm. it's going to really press the face veil to every surface of the skin, uh, especially if you're working on a client that might have a large nose like me. Um, the material will kind of tent around the nose, and you might actually want to work on an area like this and that mask would really help get it to every piece of the skin. Okay. Um, in terms of breathability, I just see some small holes here. Is that enough? Uh, for some people, it might be. There's the two nostril holes in the mouth hole, but if uh, your clients need more air, which I would, uh, it is okay to, to trim those holes and make them larger. Okay. And anything special to clean these? I mean, we, this is going to go on people's faces, so there's going to get oils, acne... Uh, makeup, makeup yeah. yeah. So how do you clean it? Well, our number one recommended cleaner is the Transeptic Solution. It's actually made in the United States. Uh, it is a medical grade cleaning solution, so you would actually just spray it on and wipe it, and it's quick and easy. And you could do the same thing with the mask. And could you use it on the, the eye mask too? Sure. Any any, uh, any surface is fine. Okay. It's uh, it's non corrosive. It's non hazardous. It's a very uh, safe cleaning solution. Now you mentioned earlier that. Um, any accessory should have the whole entire head harness, wrist straps, ankle straps, but there's nothing attached here. What's the deal? Well, it's a good question. Yeah, th th there's no button, there's no snap. Uh, the face veil is actually a special accessory in that regards because it actually comes with its connector cable. Uh, one end's got the banana plug and the other end has got the, the alligator clip. And so you can just clip it on to any part of the surface of the mask. I find that when you put it on somebody, you can have it, you're going to want it on the on one of the bottom ends because in the top it'll be interacting with the, the, uh -huh. the head harness. And then, how, where's, is there special ports that you need to be aware of on the device? This is a good question. I get asked this question all the time. 
So on the back of your device, if you have the Indigo, there's four ports, red, yellow, blue, and black. Uh, the banana plug actually will fit in all of them. However, red, yellow, and blue are the output ports and where black is the, the neutral port or the passive port, the input part. So, so yes, so with the face veil, with an indigo, you can plug it into red, yellow, or blue. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have the Eternal device, you only have got the choice of red or black, so you'd plug it into the red. Uh, if you have a Skio, uh, if your Skio is made 2007 or newer, you could use red, yellow, or blue. But if it's an early 2007 or older, uh, we found that just using the red port is the best uh, choice with that device. And then if you got the even older device, the QXCI, who you only have a red port there as well. And that's where you hook it up. Okay. So a practitioner who's just getting started or another practitioner who does not yet have a face veil, what is that going to do for their business, their clientele? What kind of market? Um, what, what's the next step? We talked about how to use it, how to clean it, but, but what can they do in their business with it? Well, the two main things that are going to get people in your door, besides helping them relieve stress, will be how to help with anti-aging and how to help uh, with pain relief. And you can use the face veil for that. That can be your main piece of equipment for helping people in uh, eliminating wrinkles on their face uh, or helping them to re relieve uh, wrinkles on their face, as well as we've proven using accessories that can enhance the session. Uh, so if uh, someone has pain in an area. Like they, what if they have it on their shoulder, what? not their face? Yeah, it, again, it, because it's called the face veil, it doesn't mean it only has to be used on the face. Because of its size, with it being 11 inches by 11 inches, or if you use the metric system, it's 28 by 28 centimeters, you can put it anywhere you want. So yes, I've heard of people putting it on their shoulders, and they have great success putting it there during a session for uh, helping with pain, pain mm -hmm. relief. Now, you had someone come back one time um, and say they actually use it on their underarms for something. Yeah, we have a, a local practitioner that wanted to tone up her, the back of her arms for summer so she could go sleeveless. And uh, so she wanted to do an empirical type test and she would only use it on the one back, back of her arm. And after a few sessions, she'd look in the mirror and she could see a really big difference in, uh, in tone of the back of her arm. So uh, it's, it's really effective in, in that. Uh, in helping people. Awesome. Um, so you would definitely recommend this to any practitioner. What if someone does have makeup? What if they come in and they've got prescription ac and, you know, acne medication or they have a lot of makeup? What, what would you recommend the practitioner do? Well, as a practitioner, you want to keep your equipment as clean as possible. Uh, first of all, you'd want to recommend the the client to uh, have his have a clean face, but you know what? It's not always possible. People come in on their lunch break, uh, they take time off from work, and they have to go back, and they don't want to have to reapply their makeup. So uh, uh, you just want to use care that if they're make if they if they keep their makeup on or they're using a skincare that they'd want it to be as organic as possible because you'd want their frequencies to go through. Uh, if if there's uh, if it's dried on uh, or if it's really thick, it might actually act as a barrier for the frequencies to travel through and they wouldn't actually get any benefit from it. So so uh, a woman or a gentleman has um, had a session. What would the practitioner recommend afterwards? It's a good question. Uh, one of the lines that we carry at the Quantum Center are the Dermagetics from Eternal. And so this is the, the day cream. Uh, what's so special about it is it's or an organic uh, a product and people have had great results. Uh, my wife even uses it and she always glows when she uses her Dermagetics. Uh, there's the day cream, the night cream, the peptide C, the eye serum, and as well as there's the face wash. What's even special about the Dermagetics as far as uh, helping your clients is you can actually set it on the test tray uh, at, during parts of the session and you can infuse frequencies into it. So uh, some people have done that as well as a way of getting clients back in the door. Mm -hmm. Now, what if somebody wanted more information on the face veil protocol? Can they get that? Uh, yes, they can. Uh, as the Quantum Center of Excellence, we're not really a, a teaching organization, so we can't really give out, uh, if you call in, we can't give you protocols on how to use the items. That's why you go to the training events uh, that, the, that your broker puts on. However, we do sell uh, training materials from different uh, trainers at the Quantum Center 
for instance, Nirvana uh, put out a A to Z protocols uh, for Skio and for Indigo, and so that's for sale, as well as we have a, a great training manual by Penny Fox from England that has protocols in it for doing this as well. Mm -hmm. So, Fernando, um, have you heard back any results of, of anybody using the face veil? Uh, I had a personal experience about a month ago when I got to use this on my mom. Uh, my mom had, uh, had met me in Las Vegas when we were there for a conference, and I hadn't ever done a biofeedback session on her. So I was really looking forward to this, so I brought all my stuff with me. And, uh, and so we had an, uh, a free day, and so my mom came to the room, and, and, uh, and so... Uh, we hooked her all up and at the end of the session my mom was just kind of rubbing her cheek right here and I go mom what, what's wrong and she says well I don't know if you know but when I ruptured my discs in, in my back she'd ruptured three discs in her in her middle back um, I've had a numbness right in this one spot for 23 years and and it's never gone away and my mom has had back surgery and uh uh, and so after one session using the Indigo with the E4I software, uh, and my mom had had the face fell on, after one hour session, the numbness was gone. She could actually feel her cheek. So for the rest of the day, my mom just sat there touching her cheek. And it was such a, an emotional thing. And then she even told me that uh, uh, it had been affecting her speech. And I had never noticed that because my mom's from Boston and she has a strong accent. And uh, so she was just so excited. And even uh, four to five weeks later, uh, she was telling me that the feeling was still there, the numbness hadn't come back. So it was. So after over 20 years of not feeling this spot, one session, a month later, she still has full feeling. Yeah, was that Interesting. great? That is great. But that's, that's one of the testimonials. I've got more, uh, but that's my favorite one because that was my mom. That's awesome. Thanks for sharing that with us. It's my pleasure.